because they just, first of all, didn't have the money to buy very many, uh, much of anything. So they didn't use really the term a dozen for very much stuff. But it was something we learned to deal with and um, I, I learned along the way something about these people is they are very happy people. They are quite fatalist. And what will be, will be. They love that scripture that says, if God wills, that is their favorite thing to say to you. They don't know anything about the Bible, but they know that. If God wills, they'll say that to you. You can go visit them in, in their home and say, uh, invite them to church, and they'll say, oh, yes, if God wills, we will be there. <laughs> well, we know right off the bat that means God's not going to will them to be there because they're not coming. <laughs> That's what they love to say. But you have to learn to deal with them and know that they are not worried about their salvation. And that's a big disappointment because we have this mental image that was given to us many, many, many years ago that there are people who are clamoring and begging and pleading to God to send somebody to them because they need to be saved. They, they're not, not in that area. They're not that way. They're not worried about it. I think, I'm, I don't know if I told you about the lady that I visited once and she had a, she was expecting a baby. She had about six <coughs> kids and they were all, you know, stair steps and she had about six and so I visited her, witnessed to her, invited her to church and a few weeks later since she hadn't come, I went back to visit her and so I realized that she had had the baby. So I said to her, oh, you've had your baby, I, I'd love to see your baby. Oh, she said, the baby died. I said, oh, I'm so sorry that your baby died. She said, it's okay. He had blue eyes. I knew he wasn't going to live. So, <laughs> you know, she wasn't worried about the fact that she lost her child. Uh, it's her fatalistic way, you know. Next year she'll have another one, and that's the way it is. So they're not worried. And so many times I've thought about Christmas in relation to these people and how that they're not worried. Because see, they are, they are, they are raised in the Catholic mentality that when they die, somebody is going to light a candle and say a prayer. And if they do light enough candles and say enough prayers, they will pray them out of purgatory and then they can go to heaven. So you see, they think there is hope after death. They, that's why they're not worried. They're really not worried about where they're going to spend eternity because of that. They, they just think it's going to be okay. you know. So that was a, a big thing. And the, the thing about it is you can't get a person saved until you get them lost until they realize they have a need and, and they didn't feel like they have a need. And so therefore, when the missionaries first arrived and started working with these people, it took them a long time to ever start coming to the point to realize that they are lost and that they need a Savior and that they need the Savior. You see, they have a lot of idols. They have a lot of images. They have Mary in various forms. They have a black Mary. They have all kinds of Marys. They have the Virgin of uh, Guadalupe. And they have the Virgin of Belain of Bethlehem. They have the Virgin of this one and that one. And they supposedly appear to people. And these people are very superstitious and they're very uh, gullible. And they believe all that. See, they believe it. And so they'll, uh, they go and they pray and they... Uh, say a few words and then they, they go on about their merry way because they're really not worried about it. But one day I was reading in Luke chapter 2 about the birth of Jesus and in verse 10 where it says, And the angel said unto them when he's coming down to speak to the, uh, the shepherds, he, he comes, comes to them and he says, uh, Lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And I thought about that in connection with, those, with the people there. 
they were afraid because they were seeing heavenly beings however they appeared you know whether they had wings or not who knows but uh, it was obvious these were heavenly people heavenly angels or uh, and they and they had a message and they were afraid and then the angel said don't don't be afraid because I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people did you ever stop to think that um, there's an old song that I love to hear some children see him white as snow some see him if you ever stop to think that if you go to a culture and the race of people are black they're going to see Jesus as a black baby yeah. if you if they've never seen our Anglo pictures of what we depict Jesus they're going to see Jesus in their mind as a black baby if you go to brown people they're going to see Jesus as a brown baby and they're going to see him like them and uh, so they, they see him in their own way and to be, just to be able to know the name of Jesus to know who he is is amazing if you really think about it it is truly amazing that there you can take this name this name of Jesus the holiest name there is and take it to a foreign country and introduce this name into a culture that knows him not and does not know this story and if you will pray for them if you will pray and be faithful to work with these people, at one point the blessed Holy Spirit works in their heart and their life, and this name becomes precious to them. And they love the name of Jesus. And that's a wonderful thing, and it shall be to all the people. And that's our promise is that we should take it. And we were singing the song, Little Is Much, and it says on that verse that if you feel like that you can't do anything anymore, what does it say? You can you can pray, and I think about Danny because Danny is having trouble walking. He has trouble with his talking. He has trouble because he's had a medical condition, and Danny could say, "Well, I can't do this," but Danny can pray. You see, there is a ministry for all of us that we can do. It doesn't mean we have to catch a boat and go three thousand miles away. We have a ministry regardless of our physical condition and the place that we are located there is a ministry the people of Brazil are a wonderful people they are kind they are friendly they are loving but they have not been worried about their salvation and so it takes someone who loves them who God sends to them to be the one who worries about them excuse the word worry because we're not worried but we are the one that is concerned about them and we would be the one to go and save because the Savior has been born. And you have a hope now of eternal life in heaven. The Bible says that um, if we go in Jesus' name that he will, he will give us uh, a people. And he did. He gave us a people. When I go there, I have my Brazilian mother. I've told you about Ilda. I would love to sometimes show you her picture. Uh, she's my Brazilian mother. She has children, and they are my Brazilian sisters. And I had a Brazilian grandmother that the Lord gave me, and she loved me, and she loved our family. The Lord gives you a family. We didn't have a family. And that is one of the things that is needed in, in a project such as we are attempting to do, the Barnabas Project.